Well, hello and welcome. How are you today? This is Patty Bennett. I am excited to show you this very, very, very cute card. And we are actually live on Facebook right now. Today is Friday, July 16th. So if you are watching live, welcome, welcome. And you might be watching a replay, which is fantastic as well. We are going to be looking at this adorable card. Look at this. How cute is this? So it's a trifold card with a pocket inside. And we are going to be making this live. I am going to give everyone a moment to jump on. But if you're joining me live and you want to make this together, this is what you're going to need. A piece of designer paper, five and a quarter by 12. And you're going to need some way to score it and cut it. So a trimmer with a cutting and scoring blade would be great. So if you want to make it together, grab that. And if not, maybe you'd want to make this later. That's completely fine as well. I'm just checking over here on the live comments. So if you're watching a replay later and you don't see the red live button up there, feel free to skip ahead about a minute because I always just like to come on just a little bit early to make sure technology is welcome. Welking? How about working? <laughs> How about if my brain is working? <laughs> and I just like to check and see if we have people on and if I'm in the right place and all of that. So if you are just joining me, we are going to be making this super cute trifold pocket card today. And if you'd like to craft live with me together, you'll want to grab a piece of designer paper five and a quarter by 12, and uh, preferably a trimmer with cutting and scoring. And then we can make this together. So let me just check on the comments. Hello, everyone. Grace, Becky, Cindy, Karen, Lori, Gail, Lynn, Nancy, Jeannie, Pat, Cindy. <laughs> so many people. I can't just, yeah, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but welcome, everyone. So good to see you on here. This is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com. And I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 26 years. I absolutely love what I do, and I love sharing with you, and I love sharing my creations on my blog. I've been blogging about 15 years. So if you have not found me yet there, I would welcome you over to my blog. Hey, in Florida and Arizona, Spokane, Washington. Hi, Mary. Welcome, everyone. So you should have seen me just a moment before we went live. Oh, my goodness. What a comedy of errors. So I bought myself one of those atomic clocks so that I would always have the correct time for joining in on my lives. I do lives for my team as well as here for you, my customers. And so I bought this atomic clock so that I would always have the correct time. And I couldn't get it to work. And so... Here I am trying to set it up. Then it fell over the railing down the stairs. I was like, oh my goodness. And I almost gave up, but I tried one more time and it's working. <laughs> so now I can see the date. I can see the time. I can actually see the weather on it. And I can see that it's time to be officially live at the top of the hour. Ta-da! <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes things like that are just not my friends. <laughs> But it finally worked. So welcome, Denise and Tammy, Carol, Susan, Jenny. Oh, Australia. Is it Kazi? Kazi? I'm not sure how to say your first name. Welcome. What an adorable name. So let's get started. We are at the top of the hour for our weekly crafting live video. Yes. Hi, Pam. Happy Friday. Oh, hi, Jen in Olympia, Washington. Oh, cute. Thank you. Pam said she shared. That's fabulous. You know, if you have crafty friends that might enjoy making this trifold pocket card, this is what we're going to make today. Look at how cute this is. A pocket inside trifold card. Go ahead and hit the share button. That would be great. Thank you. All right. And if you want to craft live with me, you're going to need a piece of designer paper cut at five and a quarter by 12. And then we're going to be scoring and cutting. So, you know, grab your, um, I'm using the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. I'm using this one that has 
cutting and scoring, or you know, if your scoring is separate on a scoreboard, that will work as well. So whatever you would like, and then you can make it together. We are featuring the In Symmetry stamp set today. I have the pieces mounted that I need. I love this font. How cute is this? I wish we had like a whole set of greetings all in this font. I wish I could actually write like that. That's really cute. We are also featuring the In Symmetry designer paper. And this is a sampling of the 12 different patterns in this package. Now, if you're watching live or you're watching within the next couple of weeks, I just wanted to remind you that this paper is part of the sale that Stampin' Up! has going on through August 2nd. So you can save and purchase this paper at a 15% discount. I, I gotta say that this right here doesn't really look a you know, as appealing as the actual paper. So be sure you click online and look at the actual patterns in these papers. This looks a little bit faded to me, but it's actually really, really, really pretty. So we are using that and we are making this cute card. So if you're just joining, welcome. Oh, you're welcome for the dimensions, Denise. Yeah, five and a quarter by 12 is the piece that you'll need. And we are making this super adorable trifold card that has a pocket. I'm going to show you how you can turn this into a gift card holder as well. And I've got the envelope decorated on the flap. Going to give you a tip for making that. And we are going to be starting. So here we go. When you pick out your designer paper to make this card, there is something to be aware of because you're going to be folding it like this. So you can see that this pattern right here would work well. This is what I've used in this card. So the front is not really, it doesn't really have an up and a down, right? It's a pattern that can work both ways. The inside has an up and a down, so I've oriented it so that when you open it, this is not upside down, it's right side up. Okay, but if we look at just for instance this one, so this has an orientation for up and down, and this one sort of doesn't. I mean, this one I'm pretty sure, well, no, it does. Those flowers are all facing that way. So if you were to flip this up and flip this down, like that's both upside down. If you flip it this way, this one would be correct, but then this one is upside down. So just be aware that whatever pattern you pick, it needs to work both directions like this one does. So see what I mean? That one is okay. That one's okay. The inside's okay. So I will show you the pattern that I picked to make for this card that I'm going to make with you. I did, picked a different pattern because I wanted to be able to make a, a different one with different colors. This pattern can go either way. This pattern can go either way. So that's why I picked it to make our second card today. And I have it pre-cut to the five and a quarter by 12. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and cut to five and a quarter by 12 and then we just need I'm popping this arm out because I need to measure up to eight inches I'm going to score it four and at eight and so you need that arm if you're using uh, the Stampin Up trimmer so I'm going to put my paper in the long way the 12 inch direction scoring at four make sure that you're using that light colored scoring blade not your cutting blade, and then scoot it over to eight and score again. Now we still need this to do some cutting, so don't put it too far away. I love to use my bone folder whenever I am doing scoring, so you'll want to get your bone folder out and reinforce so that you have so here's your trifold, okay? But as you can see in here, 
this one has a diagonal cut. So that's what we're, we're going to do next. Now here's what I did just so when I took out my cutter and I looked at my piece again, I would not be confused. What I did was I flipped up the bottom flap and I put my thumb right here to tell me that that's going to be my top point up here and that it's going to get cut this direction. So bringing the trimmer back in, I've still got my thumb holding this one. That's telling me that the point needs to go in that track. And then I know you can't see it, but I can see the fold is right there. I'm lining up the fold. Oh, that's still in camera. I'm lining up the fold with the other end of the track. So I've got the point, the fold. I'm going to close it up and I'm going to cut so that that triangle comes off. Okay, so then we have our pocket. So that's how easy it is. Really no measuring other than those two score marks. Isn't that simple, Simon? My goodness, so easy. So there you go. You can see that that's the idea. Love it. So let's put it all together. I highly recommend that you use tear and tape just to hold this side down. If you don't have it, it's not that big of a deal. You can use whatever adhesive you have, but I just feel that tear and tape is going to give your best, your best hold there. So put that on. I love to use my bone folder to just kind of burnish. And then I use just a pokey tool to release that release tape. So then we just fold this back up. And again, your um, bone folder, my goodness, why can't I think today? Your bone folder to just reinforce that. And there is, I know, Leticia, isn't this the cutest? I know, Tammy, right, I showed this to Tammy yesterday and I said, you are not going to believe how simple and how fun this card is. So besides that five and a quarter by 12 inch piece of designer paper that we just cut and scored and then cut again, <laughs> I like to put this whole card onto a regular size, so five and a half by four and a quarter inch piece of cardstock. And with this in symmetry paper, boy, you have a lot of different options for colors. So I really like that. On this one, I layered it onto the Knight of Navy just to really reinforce that blue because I totally love, and look at this. I didn't even plan this, but check out my shirt today. Did I like coordinate that pretty well? I think so. <laughs> kind of funny, right? So I am going to put some of my Seal Plus. I don't know what that's all about. Look at that little straggler. Hmm. Whatever. I don't know where you came from or who you were, but you're gone. And then just center that up. Liquid glue would also work right there if you like to give yourself a little wiggle room. But look at how fun that is, how it just kind of pops that color out. I really love it. Hi from El Dorado Hills and Connecticut. Hey, everybody. So good to see you. Yeah, Lori, super simple. Really fun. And for the front, let me bring this one in and show you what I did. I combined, or yeah, combined, I guess is the right word, some die cuts. So this one's going to be for the inside. This one's going to be for the front. Let me show you the two sets, my really my favorite go-tos, scalloped contours and stitched so sweetly. So I used scalloped dies on top of just rectangle pieces of cardstock. And I just, I really love that. I, I just think that that really pops. So we're gonna stamp the front and then the inside one. On this one, I just stamped the thanks so much 
and it goes in there and you'd write your note. But what I wanted to show you was if you have, you can just use a scrap, you can use a piece of the designer paper, you can use whatever you want. When you attach these, if you make a little a strip down here that makes a little pocket, you can tuck in a gift card and then this becomes a gift card holder. So I thought that this would be really fun if you do it with holiday paper. And this is so fast and you can get three of these. Um, wait, three? Is that right? No, two of these out of a piece of designer paper. So you could make 24 of these out of a pack of designer paper, right? Super simple. So let's go ahead and stamp this so that I can show you a couple of fun tips. I'm going to grab my stamp and pierce mat because we are using photopolymer stamps and it's always best to give yourself that little extra cushion. Thank you, Karen. She says she loves this. Oh, how cute. You guys are connecting in Iowa. Yes, Mary Ellen, exactly. For people that take care of your house, a gardener, UPS man, gosh, you name it, right? So let me show you a couple tips on stamping this. So here is the stem. And you can see if I were to stamp that stem and then stamp this flower on top of it, it wouldn't fit. So I just want to show you, and this, this might just be like super obvious, but maybe some of you had not thought about this. When you ink up the stem, you could simply ink less. Do you see that? I've inked less than the entire stem. So that I'm going to just put that one right in the middle first. So that's going to be my middle one. And then as you can see, it gives me space for my flower. Ta-da! I know, it's really silly, but, but it worked. What I did on this one was stamped my three leaf sets across the bottom, and I thought this just gave it, I don't know, sort of a fun, whimsical, kind of a funky way to do it. But I was thinking about putting the leaves up here, or maybe the middle one. That's what I'll do. Let's do that. So the middle one... Let's put it up here. Oh, that's super cute. Look what a difference that made. And then we will grab, oh, by the way, this was just Jade. Uh, you, There's a few different greens you could use on this. I'm just gonna stamp on my scratch paper. Yep, it's all good. Uh, this is Calypso Coral. So there's our middle flower clean that off because I'm going to go to Bumblebee for the other two. You could also use um, Mango Melody or Crushed Curry or even Daffodil. So it's not like you have to have the exact colors I have. But I am going to do the other two leaves at the bottom just to make this one different. And then I did the stem even shorter, so I need to clean that off. And then I am oh, almost did Calypso Coral, heavens. So I'm going to make that one even shorter. Just going to ink that much of it. You could even do three stems at completely different heights as well. That would be cute. Be totally doable. I've got Bumblebee here for the other two flowers. Let's see. Oh, sorry. I thought somebody was asking me something, but you are you are still chatting with each other about Iowa. That is so fun. I love that. So cute that you are connecting. <laughs> I love it. All right, so there is our middle piece. And we are going to attach it here. I wanted to show you what I did with these cute little dots. So this is the pack called Playing With Pattern Resin Dots. So you have 
Purple Posy, which is a retired color, but they kept it here. But it also goes really well with the freesia and the heather and the gorgeous grape. And then there's Bumblebee. And then I think this is Jade. It doesn't it doesn't say on here, but I think this is the Jade. So there are different colors then that would go with this if you wanted to alter them. And I wanted some Calypso Coral dots for the centers of my yellow flowers. And so all I did was take my marker and do this. Now you can see that that's a little bit lighter. So here's the secret. You let that dry. You have to let it dry. You have to let the alcohol evaporate. When it's dry, you go over it a second time and it'll get darker. So that is my secret. So I'm going to put the yellow one in the center in the center of the Calypso Coral. And then since these are already dry and colored twice, there you go. We're putting those two coral ones in the center of the bumblebee. Isn't that cute? Gives it such a fun little whimsical look. And I totally love the leaf higher up on that one, but really cute, really cute. All right. So we will attach and then I'm going to use my favorite. This is the foam sheet from Stampin' Up. This is the size that it comes. And I just love, love, love to use this instead of multiple pieces of um, dimensionals. So I'm going to attach that one flat and then peel off my backing, put that on here, peel off my backing, and put that on the front. And we have like buckets of cuteness happening right there, don't you think? So cute. On this one, I colored the white twine with my Knight of Navy Stampin' Blends to get another pop of the blue but I kind of like this one I'm going to leave it because of doing those leaves higher I don't think it needs a bow so I think that's really cute and then I did use misty moonlight ink on the inside of this one so you could stamp a greeting on the inside if you'd like or like I just showed you you can make a little pocket and make the inside piece into a gift card holder you could put a die cut here. Um, that would be really cute, like, you know, a to from or something in there. You could do that as well. And then our last step is decorating the flap of the envelope to go with this card. If you were with me from the beginning, you saw that I had already had this one that coordinates with this card. I wanted to really pull in the... um navy or moonlight. You can use those really interchangeably on this card. Misty Moonlight or Night of Navy both work really well. So let me just show you the quick tip if you've never done this. So I love the liquid glue. I open up the flap and I just put some liquid glue on the flap. And should we do matchy matchy or should we do the inside matchy matchy? Hmm. Hmm. I think this kind of shows a, a really cute sneak peek of what's to come. So I am going to just make the decision to do that. And I've lined it up with the fold of the envelope. And then when that's dry, it really helps if you wait till it's dry, you just take your paper snips and you're going to just kind of butt them right up next to the edge of the flap and you're just going to trim that away. Now, since we don't have the luxury of waiting for it to dry, I will just go ahead and cut. And even if you sliced off a tiny bit of the white of the envelope, it doesn't matter because nobody will ever know that. This is just a cute alternative to doing an envelope liner that goes inside. But I think, hang on, I've got glue on me. 
I think that it makes a nice little like a sneak peek of what's to come when you put it on the outside. And then we have that as a matching set. I really like that. Isn't it cute? So easy and so adorable. And that's all there is to it. What do you think? Do you love it? I love it. Uh, Marthy said, Mar Marthy, Marcy said she went back and forth on ordering this. Yeah, it's really cute. The in symmetry has an, a punch that is part of a bundle. Oh, wait, don't go yet. I have another card to show you. I just glanced over there. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. Um, this has a punch that goes with it, and it does not actually punch out anything in the set, but that is part of the bundle. And if you don't want the punch, you can just get the set. So hang on. So I just reminded myself. So you know this piece that we cut off? I couldn't let that go, right? I just couldn't let it go. I couldn't just toss it. And I knew if I set it aside, it'd be like, uh, what am I going to do with this? I don't, you know, what am I going to do? So... I put the diagonal piece, this triangle, onto one of the Stampin' Up! note cards, and I just made a second card. So let me show you how easy that is. And look how cute, what a cute little set that makes. So here are the Stampin' Up! note cards. If you don't have these and you don't use these, I would recommend keeping a little set of these or 10 or 12 packs, you know, if you're crazy like me. And it's great because you get 20 cards and 20 envelopes. They're pre-cut and they're pre-scored. And I just love to use these. I use them all the time. So here we have thick, basic white, pre-cut, pre-scored. I'm just going to reinforce that score. And I just glued this. You can see here what I did is I just moved it up a little from the bottom over a little from the right to give myself that white border. So when I'm going to glue here, I'm going to avoid the very tips of these because as you saw, they hung off the edge. So we don't want glue hanging off the edge. So I just did that. took my snips and snipped off those tiny little parts. Don't need those. Okay. And then again with the scalloped contour dies, a cute scallop, but this time you can see what I did is I reversed. So over here we did the scallop contour in white and I did the Knight of Navy rectangle. Here I have the scallop contour in the Knight of Navy, and I have a stitched rectangle that's going to go on top. And I also, I had this piece just laying around. I thought this could be really cute as well if you wanted to do, you know, pull in the bumblebee or the curry, but I really kind of like that pop of white. I don't know. I really do like that. Like, I really like that. Hmm. Then you could even, I don't know, I'm thinking like one of these tags. Thank you, Die Cutting Fairy, for all my tags. You could do a tag across there. Wouldn't that be cute? Or one of my favorite dies over here. I love this one. You could just keep going with all the scallops. Oh, how cute would that be? Yeah, I don't know. So I will finish this one later and decide what I want to do. But I just wanted to show you that you can use your little triangle and just do an extra card so that you're not wasting. Um, what about the yellow behind the white? Yeah, I had thought of that, except I want to show you. It doesn't quite layer. See, they didn't... If I were them, I would have made it so that, right, so that it ended. See what I mean? Yeah, I know. I tried. That really was a bummer. I could just cut white, though, and put it on top of here. So whatever. I will decide, and I will do something cute with that. So, yes, Tammy Savello, a.k.a. the Die Cutting Fairy. She is a godsend. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> 
So here we go. We would have this cute little set of two cards and this set of two cards and you're not wasting anything and it just uses that half a sheet of paper of designer paper 12 by 12 paper I don't know I think it's cute and again here's a quick look at all the patterns the 12 patterns in the in symmetry or excuse me sweet symmetry designer paper and then we also used the in symmetry stamp set a lot of S's. <laughs> so if you need any of these supplies, you can hop over to pattystamps.com. These will all be linked here um, in the blog post tomorrow. I'll have these up with the replay and all the links. And I will add the shopping links to the description of this video on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, just give me a few minutes and I will do that. Jennifer says, do I have the ribbon from the suite? Uh, yes, I do. It is this, I believe. Is that correct? Since it was the flamingo and I was focusing more on the Calypso coral, I didn't pull it out. So here's the whole suite and it does have that ribbon in it. I think it just depends what you're focusing on, what colors you're focusing on. It It goes cute. It's fine with that, but I'm not sure that it's exactly the best with the coral. It's fine. It would work. Uh, yeah, the two little sprigs are the punch that goes with it. Exactly. Thank you. Oh, I could show you that. It's a little hard to see. Let me just hold it up. So it's this sprig punch, two little sprigs. It does not punch this out, though. I don't want you to be misled at all. It's an entirely different size than the sprig stamp. You can see them here. They've punched out a whole bunch of them. They're adorable and you could definitely just add them to these cards, but I just chose not to for this. So any questions? Um, Jennifer, I just had an idea. Hang on here. So Jennifer said the ribbon doesn't completely appeal to her, but I just had an idea. What if we colored this with the Calypso Coral marker and that gold, yeah, the gold still stands out, and then it would have matched these cards. So let's, let me hold these together, and I'm wondering... Hang on, I don't know, I'm not, not being coordinated. So here's the ribbon just off the bolt in the flamingo, and then here it is colored with some of the Calypso coral. And the beautiful gold shows through. You still have that nice vibrant color, but I don't know. Oh, Jennifer says I'm a genius. I think that means she likes it. And then it would definitely coordinate with what I just did today with the coral ink. So that would be an option as well. I mean, this really, look, this is fine. This is fine with it. That would be cute. You could totally do that. But, um, you know, either way. So just an option. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I really hope that you enjoyed this idea. And just if you missed the beginning... It's a trifold pocket card. You can use it for a gift card holder or just a note photo. I was also thinking at Christmas time, you could fold up your family Christmas letter with a photo and tuck it in. And wouldn't that be cute? Or maybe photo on the front, tuck your newsletter in here. So lots of different ideas. And I hope you enjoy. Yeah, it does make the gold pop. Yeah. So if you have any questions... Just let me know. I will hang out for a moment. If you've seen all the, the fun and you don't have any questions, you are welcome to pop off. And please visit me at pattystamps.com for all of the information and details. Um, oh, yeah. Melissa said she usually only colors the white ribbon. Last week on our live, we colored this ribbon and this ribbon. So I colored this with Granny Apple Green. 
and I colored this with Calypso Coral, and they were beyond gorgeous. Really fun. So you'll have to maybe go back and watch if you had not seen last week's live video. Um, anybody else have questions? If not, I'll let you go. Um, don't see any questions popping through. I know it takes a minute, so I'll just wait. And I appreciate you joining me each week. So fun to craft with you. You're welcome, Melissa. Well, thank you. I appreciate everybody joining, and I will see you live next week. Have a wonderful weekend. I am working on uh, 450 catalogs to be pushed out and in the mail next week for the holiday catalog for my customers. And I am also working on projects that I'm doing for an upcoming three-day retreat, just wrapping up the details on that. So busy weekend here at the Bennett household. <laughs> I hope you all have a great weekend. I will chat with you soon. Bye.